Okay, in the last video, we talked about how computer input circuits work. In this video, I want to discuss computer output circuits. Now, we know that an input signal comes into the computer and triggers it to process, and then that computer generates an output signal, which is basically a voltage signal that will turn on or off or control some type of an actuator, such as a motor or a solenoid or relay, possibly even turning on and off a light or a heating element. It essentially allows the computer to control some kind of a device. Now here's a basic computer output circuit. And all that happens is the computer uses a transistor or a solid state switch to turn on and off the circuit. Now computers are made up of transistors. The logic circuit inside of a computer can be composed of billions of tiny transistors. But the transistors that are used to control output devices are unique. And we call them drivers because they're larger than typical transistors and they can handle a higher current load you can see in this circuit that this motor has a ground already. What it needs now in order to work is a power. And this power has to come through this transistor from the battery. So the way a transistor works is it's made up of a semiconductor. On a very basic level, a semiconductor sits on the fence between being a conductor and an insulator. It's indecisive. Let's call this the semiconductor inside of this transistor. This piece right here. And in its rest state, it doesn't conduct. So current can't flow through this transistor to this motor right now. But all we need to do is apply a very small voltage to the semiconductor. And this is called the base of the transistor, by the way. We apply a very small voltage to this base, and it changes the semiconductor's mind. It decides to be a conductor. And once it does that, current can flow through that. So that's essentially how this type of a circuit works. By applying a signal voltage to the base, we can energize this. Now there are basically two ways that we can lay out these output circuits. We can have a high side driver or we can have a low side driver. Now the only difference between these two is that the high side driver, like the circuit we just saw, supplies the power to this actuator, to this output device. Now on the other hand, this motor, if we look at it, is already connected to the battery voltage. It needs a ground and its ground is completed through the transistor in the ECU like this. Now when diagnosing output circuits, it's really important to be able to tell whether we're dealing with a high side or low side driver, and it's very easy to do. For example, let's take a look at this horn circuit. You can see immediately that here is the body control module. Here's the horn switch sense, so this is the input circuit. And once this circuit has been triggered by the input signal here, the computer processes and then energizes a transistor driver that would provide an output signal to this relay coil. So all we have to do is look at the relay coil and ask, is this a ground or a power? Pretty simple. It already has power here, already connected to 12 volts here, so it needs a ground in order to turn on. And once it turns on, it would close the switch and honk the horn. So this is a low side driver, so we could imagine in here that we have a transistor that looks something like this, and it's going to connect to the ground, and we would have a trigger signal over here that would energize this transistor and turn that on. Let's take a look at this interior light circuit. So this body control module will turn on the interior light when one of these door switches is closed. So when a door switch closes, this output signal is energized. So we have some kind of a driver here. Is it a high side or a low side driver? We would need to decide by looking at the other side of this light bulb. And since it has 12 volts here, we know that this is going to have to be a ground, so it's a low side driver. We'll look at one more. Here is a radiator fan. This radiator fan is turned on by a relay, but the relay itself is controlled by a computer. Here's the relay control, so this is the output wire. This coil needs a power and a ground in order to turn on. It already has a ground, therefore, on this side, we're dealing with a high side driver. Let's look at another one quickly. This is a charging system, and this is the rotor inside of the alternator. So this rotor, in order to energize, needs to have a power and a ground. And here's the powertrain control module that controls this. This rotor connects directly to the battery, so it already has a power. So in other words, it's going to be duty cycled or controlled or pulse width modulated by a low side driver inside of this powertrain control module. Now here's one more example that's a little bit unique. We have a power door lock circuit. 
Now, in order for these power door locks to lock and unlock, we would need to reverse the polarity. So to lock these doors, well, we might apply a power to this wire and a ground to this wire. On the other hand, to unlock them, we would need to apply a ground to this side and a power to this side. So in other words, each of these wires would need to have a high side driver and a low side driver connected to it so that we could apply either one, so that we can apply a power and a ground, or we can apply a ground and a power to that to lock or unlock the doors. Now speaking of computer output circuits, I want to bring up another point. A lot of times when we're controlling our circuits by a computer, we'll notice that there is no fuse in this circuit. So what would happen if these two wires shorted together? Of course that would cause too much current to flow and would damage something, and probably the first thing to be damaged would be the driver. However, in all of our modern computers, these driver circuits are monitored for excess current. And when current goes above a certain threshold, that driver is disabled and it won't turn on anymore. And usually what will happen is it will store a DTC. So we'll get a trouble code that will say something like current flow in the headlamp circuit is too high or the headlamp circuit is shorted. And that circuit is disabled just as if it had a fuse. And how do you reset that? You would go in and clear the DTC typically. Once you clear that DTC, the circuit would work again, but if the problem or the short is still there, it's going to happen over and over again until we fix the problem. So that's how we get away with having circuits like this that don't have fuses. They still don't let the smoke out of the computer when something goes wrong. Okay, so those are the basics of how a computer output circuit works. We'll either have a high side driver or a low side driver that controls any of our output devices or components or circuits in our vehicle and being able to identify whether it's a high side driver or a low side driver is very simple but essential to being able to test this.